And good morning and welcome to Touch Base Daily. And hello, everyone. It is Wisdom Wednesday. And you know what we do on Wisdom Wednesday. We talk to our amazing photographers and all those people that in, impact the photography industry uh, and all of, the, all of we photographers, we, they drop the wisdom. So today we have Jason Little coming on in a, in a little bit. But I just want to greet everyone and say hello. Hello, Kelly A is in the building. What's going on? And Anthony is in the building. He says, good morning. Chris Edwards is in the building. Touch base daily family. What's going on? Yes, I'm sure the information is getting out there into the world that we are on and uh, all the notifications are going out and it, people will just trickle in. And uh, but we're not going to stay long. We're not going to talk about news today, as much news as there is. But tomorrow, um, Chris and I will be talking about news. So tune in tomorrow for all the latest headlines that we'll be talking about tomorrow. And there are so many, but I'm so tempted, but I will not do it. I will not do it. <laughs> Jason is in the studio, so I'm going to wait. I'll wait and wait till tomorrow. Oh, there's so much news to talk about. I'm salivating. What's going on, Derek? Good morning. West Coast is in the building. How are you? Let's see who's in the Instagram world. Okay, Instagram folks, if you are in Instagram, you need to come on over to our Touch Base Daily on YouTube. Make the change, make the change, swap over, come on over to our YouTube channel. You will have a better experience. Just put in the YouTube touch base daily and it will just pop on up. You can put it in Google and it'll pop on up and just come on over to our YouTube channel. And when you're here, subscribe and like if you end up liking this show. Okay, anyway, so I see some of you guys in Instagram world. Come on over to YouTube. You'll be able to work. You can put it on your big screen. You can put it on your laptop. You can put it on your tablet. You can put it on the wall. Anyway, come on over. Hey, my son is in the building. Mr. Adrian, what's going on? Good morning, fam. And see, he, he waited just like any guest would. Uh, this weekend was my son's birthday. Adrian's birthday. I will not tell you his numbers, but it was his birthday. <laughs> so, so give him a happy birthday, Mr. Adrian Florence. Uh, he had, um, yeah, I tried to check in on him, but he he was so busy. I couldn't, I couldn't reach out. I couldn't get him. But I, I think I might have been the first person to wish him a happy birthday for his birthday because I wait. I was waiting to 1201, 12.01, and I said, happy birthday. Anyway, um, well, you know what? Let me tell you who we have on today. Today, we have Jason Little on, and let me just kind of like, we're going to talk about his pictures and all that good stuff, but I want you to see the quality of, this work, of his work, but I'll tell you, I still can't remember how I met Jason. I... I think we, I'm not sure if it was at an exhibition, but we were both in an exhibition together. I can't remember. However, I know once I was turned onto his page, I follow everything he does. He throws on, he puts out stories every day. I click on all his stories. <laughs> he rises, Ron is always here. Ron is always here clicking on these stories um, because he, you, he, he really does have an amazing view of the world. And uh, as a photographer, our eyes as photographers is to be the eyes to the, to the, about what's going on to the world. And as photographers, we freeze that stuff. And um, but Jason has an incredible body of work. And let me just kind of like give you the, a little leeway as I'm talking about him. And, um, and then we're gonna, I'm going to have him come onto the screen. Come on to the come come on to the platform. And so this is some of his work. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. And um I know I I I fell in love with his work. I first was introduced to his work because of um the Black Lives Matter protests. 
And um, and so we were, I think we, we were all out in the streets, but I came across his work and I was like, wow. But he does so much more than just protest photography. I think he shies away from the, the name do, uh, documentarian, but he is an amazing documentarian. He documents everything. He is an, he's a photographer that doesn't have a genre. He's like myself. We like to shoot what we love. And um, so anyway, you're seeing his work. We're going to talk more about it. We're going to go to talk about the stories behind his photos. But anyway, without any further ado, it is Mr. Jason D. Little. Welcome to the platform, sir. Ron, how are you? How are good. you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me back. For yes. Appreciate it. I'm very feel very honored. We're a little more sophisticated now since yeah, the last I see. time you were here. I see. <laughs> I see. Still have yes. a little, little a little glitch coming on, but I got it. Got it figured out. You figured it out, but I'm so glad you're here. And so um, Jason is, like I said, is one, he's so cool. And um, so Jace, uh, what, what's going on in your world these days? And then we're going to, and then we're going to start asking you questions about all kinds of stuff. I mean, the usual It's it's uh, nothing new, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. You know, I just stay you know, if, if if I leave home, there's a camera with me and whatever happens, happens, and hopefully I can catch it, you know. So there are a couple of questions we like to ask our guests. One is, if you were stranded on an island, what food item must you have? Oh, man. <laughs> um... For me, it's pizza. It will always be pizza, but <sighs> <laughs> what is it for you, sir? Deep thought, I'm, right? I'm, 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 yeah, but I'm going to have to say bagels. Bagels? Yeah. What kind of bagel? Any, any. But if I can have, like, <laughs> a little a little addition to that, cream cheese. Like, they have to go together. So I'm going to have to have both of these together. Uh, <laughs> now, I do love bagels. I used to, uh, when I was in college, college began my bagel years because um, I was I was what we call a poor student, meaning yeah. financially poor, yeah. <laughs> dirt poor. And I would have grilled bagels and grilled cheese uh, sandwiches. Uh, when I would go to the cafeteria, they always saw wrong with the grilled cheese bagel or the grilled okay. cheese sandwich. <laughs> so, well. That's how we do it. So also, I have another question for you. Share three fun facts about you. What what does, you know, because I see you online a lot, and people see you online a lot. What are some, what are three things that people don't know about you that you will be willing to share? <laughs> oh, that's... I mean, the, the, the fun sides of me I tend to share online. Um... You know, I mean, if you if you've seen my stories, you 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 know know me pretty well. I mean, um, I love you know, I love um, Marvel movies. I'm, I'm a Wu Tang fanatic, um, and maybe people didn't know I love bagels. Yeah, that might be something <laughs> too. So I, you know, <laughs> I didn't know you. I didn't know you love bagels. Yeah. So that's one. <laughs> So I know next time we hang out, we're going to a bagel shop. Yeah, they're, they're, they're perfect. That's all we need. And what, so here now we're going into your, into your story. How, tell us about your career journey. How did you start? When, when, you, when was the first moment you picked up a camera and said, I, I like this thing and I'm going to do this. You know, this is going to be my thing. I'm going to be a photographer. Yeah, um, it was it was at some point during my college years, you know, I, when I, I had a little point and shoot, um, some Olympus, I don't remember the model, but um, I took a shot that I really liked, um, liked it enough to make a small print of it. And, you know, I would look at it and think I could do this, you know, and it wasn't really my first time with the camera. I had sort of just played around with shooting 
you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, I would have my aunt's Polaroid and, you know, just, just, just waste film, you know? And, um, you know, but at that point I felt like I, I, I can do this. I want to do this. And, you know, I upgraded. I got my first like real camera, this Canon Rebel. I don't, I don't know, some Canon Rebel and I had like one lens and I taught myself how to use it. And after that, it was just, um, you know, it was, it was straight ahead, you know, learning everything that I could, you know, I was absorbing information from, from, from books and, and, you know, online communities and all these sorts of things. And, you know, just, just wow. put my head down and went, went all in. What was your, what, what was your first favorite genre? Like you said, you know what? I am like when I first started photography, my first thing was travel. Well, mm -hmm. no, no, I take it back. It was photographing. I was the church photographer. So mm -hmm. uh, at my dad, my adopted dad's church, I would be the photographer for all the outings and all the 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 get togethers, the choir tours and all that stuff. And I would photograph, you know, every and any and everything and mm -hmm. that's how i really got my start with my little pentex camera mm -hmm. and um what was the and, and that became my genre because that's what i did all the time mm -hmm. what was your first genre that you did all the time and then you start to advance to something else um it was macro say that yeah, again I, macro macro photography oh, macro yeah i i just wanted to it, it maybe it was my science brain you know taking over but i wanted to see how anything and everything looked very close up looked magnified you know i wanted i wanted a photograph of the most common object and i wanted to to, to see the the tiniest detail that i could and um yeah i mean from flowers to uh, you know, insects, you know, I was putting everything, you know, under a macro lens and, and shooting it. And then wow. I just expanded out of that and went to the, you know, the wider world. What was, uh, what was your favorite bug to photograph? Your favorite insect? Hmm. I don't know. I think, I feel like for some reason I, I shot beetles a lot, beetles. you know, I, I don't know. But I think I did more flowers than insects. Flowers, any yeah. any particular flower you would go. No, nah, it's just just anything, anything I saw. You know, I wanted to see it in in as much detail as possible. Wow. Yeah. You're the. I see this whole community. Everyone that visits here is a is a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Right, the, right. This is the nerd gathering. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should call it instead of touch base daily the nerd gathering. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. So so then what? when you after you went from macro um you know micro photography and photographing all you know the small things in life what uh what was your next genre what and how did um, it I shot, how did I you move some... from small things to the next thing just I, I won't say boredom but um just not being satisfied with one stand in one place mm -hmm. you know so yeah, there's, there's there's so much more to see. So I was like, well, let me try this. Let me try that. So I, you know, I did sports and you know events and um, just random portraits. You know, if it was family gathering or something like that, I would do that. And mm -hmm. you know, and so that's sort of how um, my fascination with photographing people yes. set in. You know, and so, I mean, really, that's where I'm at now. You know, even my street photography, it it's about the city, but it's just as much about the people, their expressions, their emotions, you know, whatever I can catch of them and how they interact with the city, you know. Wow. How long have you, how, I mean, if you, if you calculate the time, how long have you been photographing? I mean, from beginning to um, now? Uh, pushing Pushing 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good time. Yeah. That's some, that's some years, two decades. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now you've moved from the little things in life to family to just things photographing 
people and objects around you. Um, you're a film photographer. Mostly, correct? yeah, yeah. The majority is film. I do shoot and digital, but. What made you decide to do, I mean, you're a pretty young dude. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. what? why wouldn't you, you know, go with the easy thing, the digital? Uh, what made you decide to go with the film? Maybe because it was hard. Mm. You know, I, so I, when I started, you know, of course I started on digital, you know, but I would look through books and I would see all these amazing photographs and I was, oh, I love this so much and I love it. And I, and I would think about the things that I saw online, you know, mm. what people were doing. And it was good stuff. It was nice. I learned from it. But the books, the things that I saw in books from the 1950s and the 60s and the 70s, just like they held something magical for me. And I'm mm. like, all this stuff is on film, right? Digital didn't exist for the for, for them, you know? And I wanted to be like that. I wanted to emulate those photos. Not 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 necessarily the subject or whatever, but like um the 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 emotion they could convey, you know, that aesthetic that they conveyed also, you know. Mm. And I was like, this is this is done on film. And I just wanted to learn how to do it. And I did it. And it wasn't great the first time and mm -hmm. wasn't great the second time or the third time. And but eventually, you know, I got the hang of it, you know. Um and it's just a process that I really enjoy, you know. And mm -hmm. then eventually I started to develop my own film, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's it's the whole process, start to finish. I I load that roll of film and I'm responsible, right? Exposure to load it properly the whole night. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to take it out, develop it, scan it, you know, so when something goes well, it's really, really satisfying, you know, mm -hmm. um, and if it goes wrong, there's nobody to blame but yourself. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I can't blame the lab or whatever, because I scared, you know, I did all that. So, you know, it's I, I just love the process. When did you um uh, when did you learn how to um I know when I was in school um the first my first first introduction into film and lab I was in junior high school <laughs> and then I was like I don't like the smell the smell is horrible and um but I wanted to take pictures but I was mm. like the smell is horrible so um how did you fall in love with the process of using the chemicals and uh, taking that photo and putting it in the pan and letting it, you know, move it, it a little bit and kind of like move it and shift it and and then I mean, and then the kind of like you're time, editing while it's in the water or the, the solution? The, the first time I did it, you know, the first time I developed a role, it was just and I and I and I pulled the negatives out and it was there's stuff there, right? And mm -hmm. That that was it. It was it was I was hooked. It didn't take any deep thought. There was no philosophy behind. It's like this is it. I have to keep doing this. That's it. You know, <laughs> and, and I kept doing it. Did you and you did you you carved out a space in your home? Your parents were like, oh, what's going on, Jason? You well, well no, I've you... done this more recently, and oh, um, okay. yeah, you know. So the way I do it is very minimal. You know, minimalistic. Um, it doesn't take a lot of space. You know, so it's just a matter of um, being efficient, you know, with all your chemicals and, and, and you know, the equipment you use. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an addiction, you know. I, 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 I can't not shoot film at this point. Wow. Wow. I, like I said, I remember in junior high school, that was like, ah, oh, no. But, I mean, I would say, like, once I took the picture with my camera, I would immediately send it to the drugstore right, and right. get excited <laughs> about going to the drugstore and like, oh my gosh, my photos are going to be, yeah. I'm going to have them next week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you get like excited about it. Yeah. But I remember also in junior high school, we were in class and we were, um, we were using the solution. We were in a dark room. And the red light was on, and I remember someone busting in <laughs> into the room, and right. all of the, all the students were like, "No, yeah, yeah, our, yeah. our pictures were not going to be yeah. right because yeah, of the there's light. a lot that can go wrong with film, but <laughs> so there's a, yeah, you say exactly. There's a lot that can go right. I mean, go right or go wrong. Right, both. Yeah, in film. 
because there's so many layers to the mm -hmm. process yeah and that you are involved in uh, versus digital or you know you click yeah. on the, you photograph right. it, you click right. it and then you send it out and it's exactly. done you're done yeah yeah so okay so you know we're going to uh has a, is a, so you ended up i mean all of all of the photographers seem like in new york city were on the streets doing um black lives matter mm -hmm. you were out a lot during that time mm -hmm. and being a film photographer what were the challenges of um photographing the protests the expressions moving changing changing of light change shadows um a uh, situation becoming uh accelerated because uh it was getting dangerous because a lot of people moving in one direction or mm -hmm. the police because uh, some of your photos you encounter and we're going to talk look at some of those photos how how does a film photographer how is it different from the digital i know digital we can click 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 and then delete along the way mm -hmm. but when you are a film photographer you are very intentional Yes. How does, how um, does that work? For me, like you said, everything is moving fast and you have to be aware of, of your surroundings at, at, at every second. And um, but the the challenges really are in general, they're not any different, right, from anything else. But you ha at some point you have to be aware of where you are on your frame, you know, so you can change roles, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, so when I'm shooting film, that was the only, really, that was the only difference, you know, oh, I'm at the end of the role. Let me make sure I have another role with me. I have to take this one out, make sure it's wound properly, put the next one in, make sure I load it properly, you know, and of course, I, I think you have to be a little more um, aware of, of, of your exposure and things like that than you would with a digital. Um, but other than other than that, you know, I have to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, which is Hold on a second. Oh, keep going. I'm gonna just close my. Yeah, window. no, I'm just saying that's 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 true. No matter what, um, uh, whether you're shooting film or digital, so you just have to be in the moment. This picture right here. What's the story going? What's going on here in, in this picture? Okay, so there. This was um, at, at the moment. I don't remember what it, what what specifically it was in response to. I remember there was um, a police incident that ha had happened recently. I think it was in Rochester. Um, and so this is near City Hall, and it was late. You know, people had come together. It ended up being a bit of a standoff. And this, this guy right here, you know, he was like, I'm tired. I've been here for, you know, so many hours. I'm going to eat. You know, he set out, you know, you see he's surrounded, you know, police on, 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 on either side of him. And, um, you know, it was a defiant moment. You know, um, he said, I'm not moving. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to eat. You're here. You're not going to eat. You're going to watch me eat. <laughs> and you know, and um, so it was just a moment of defiance, and you know, uh, um, that's what I, I was. love this picture. I love the way it's framed. I love the way you have the protesters in the for in the background, and you they're all lined up. I love the way the balance is in this photo. But and I you got these two New York PD. Um, you see the strategic uh, response uh, group, and then this gentleman. <laughs> with his uh plate of food and kind of like antagonizing them looks like he's yes. like you know yeah. it is something you know it's one of those moments when you're a photographer you your eyes are just moving and roaming through um what's going on in the especially in a protest yeah and um and you were able to see seek this out and it was it, it landed in front of you yeah for for with with purpose Man. And yeah, I saw it and, you know, my eyes got big and I was like, yes, that's it. There it is. Wow. I'm going to say, I'm going to show another one. Hold on a second. Because 
not only do you, you do pro here's an, uh, I'm gonna give you another protest one that was really cool to me. These for those that are, these some of these are from his uh, website, and uh, here's another one. What's going? I love this shot. This, yeah, this shot was is um, beautiful. Yeah, we were actually uptown. We were headed across the uh, George Washington Bridge that day. Wow! Into uh, into Jersey. How do you, you know, I'm looking at this, the, the framing again is so beautiful. What goes into your mind as you're framing this kind of shot? Just, I'm really, I'm just thinking of how to portray the energy that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how, how, how can I best convey what I have in my head, what I'm seeing? to mm -hmm. a still frame, you know? And, um, you know, so hands matter, even when you don't see um, an entire face, as you see, you know, his is cut off here. I think his hand, his gesture um, helps tell the story. Yeah. I mean, I love the way, uh, it's almost like they're in a Delta formation. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I look at the angles and you, how it just, he's right there and then it layers back. Um, you see the two uh, female protesters next to him with their, mm -hmm. with their bullhorns. And then it layers back to the back where you see people with their signs and the yes. hands up as well. Yeah. It's like this repetition is in the frame, mm -hmm. hands up, bullhorns. It's, it's a beautiful photo. Thank you. Um, but you don't just only do protests. You do. Let's go to there was one that's really cool. Oh, here it is. This is one one of these moments. What's going on here, sir? It was I don't know. I you know what when it gets foggy, if I see this, you know, heavy fog come over the city, I'm probably going outside. You know, mm. it's in the story. So I'm gonna go and um, you know, I mean the city just looks and feels a certain way with this blanket of fog around it and um so i went i went down to the seaport and it, there weren't a lot of people out i guess everybody was just you know sort of staying indoors on this really what, what they would say an ugly day but for me it wasn't an ugly day and i went out and i just saw this couple i think they were tourists they were i think i remember them looking at a map or something you know but this moment they just sort of touched their heads together and I guess they were trying to figure out where to go or how to get there. And, and, you know, that, that was, that was the shot for me. Yeah. I am like lazy <laughs> on cloudy <laughs> days. <laughs> I'm like, but it is a, one of the days that photographers love to hit the streets mm -hmm. is when, especially street photographers and those that live in an urban setting, um, the it's it's the inclement days, the days where there's a lot of fog or there's mm -hmm. the streets are covered or uh, totally wet because of a major rain or um there's a storm going on and someone you know you just kind of like went catch people with the umbrellas and the wind and the you know fighting against the elements is something that we photographers are drawn to. Uh, yes. I I you can always tell folks that are street photographers and that love their trade of being street photographers and documenting life as life goes on mm -hmm. uh, in an everyday sense. Um, but we go and grab our cameras in these moments and, um, and someone that may not be as experienced in photography, they will say, oh my gosh, the sky is blue. It's a beautiful day out to yeah. go take a photo. Yeah. And most photographers are like, what? <laughs> no, right, right, right. <laughs> right. Because the beauty of photography is the elements. Yes, I agree. What are some What are some of the other elements that you love that draw you out into the streets to photograph? Because you are a street photographer. You're a documentarian. You you share. You know, you take photographs of of um, events and things that are happening. But you primarily love to hit the streets and just mm -hmm. do your your thing. What elements 
in the weather draw you out besides the fog? Besides the fog, that's like that's number one for me. I love that. But um, rain, snow, you know, I I, I love the snow. Uh, speaking uh, of snow, so yeah, lovely shot. Thank you. Yeah, if it's snowing, I'm going outside. That's again not a question. So yeah, I I don't really look for a beautiful day. You know, mm. uh, you know, I want to go out when people are like, oh, it's so ugly out, or you know, whatever. That's like I'm kind of drawn to that. You know, it it, it adds something to your photo. I see. And Paro says, um, I'm inspired to shoot in the fog this spring. I love big. She meant fog. <laughs> there it goes. Fog. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, I love the fog. I think it's, it's something mysterious about the fog. Yeah. Something very mysterious. I'm going to go through some warrior photos here. We can talk about some of these guys. Here's a, another. Do you, which do you like photographing more? Black, or, black and white or color? When it comes down to a black and white, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will, you know, sort of instinctively reach for a role of black and white. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, I, I love color too. I mean, there are definitely, you know, scenarios where I do prefer color. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, you know, if, if, if color film just went out of existence today, I, you know, I'd be all right. You'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on here this gentleman is this a pose shot or is this uh, no, just this is in shot. the moment this is um former uh nba player Am amari stoudemire and mm -hmm. this is a um, shot near his um home in, in in brooklyn and um a friend and i were just doing some you know some fashion lifestyle shots for him and um, this is a shot of him walking uh, across the street. I think this was, I don't know, maybe the fourth or fifth outfit we had done that day. Wow. So you do fashion photography as well? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself that, but you know, it was just something, you know, something we did. It was very, um, very casual. Here's an interesting photo. This is obvious, some kind of protest. Yeah, it was a climate protest um, at climate. Rockefeller Center. Okay. And wow, were you were you were you planning to go to this event or yeah, I was asked to do something I was asked to do. Um the organizers wanted, you know, someone that first of all they were familiar with and someone who had, you know, some some discretion in their shots because this was it was really a low key thing in the beginning. Um they didn't mm -hmm. want to attract too much attention on the way. And um you know, but they wanted someone to document it. So it was myself wow. and maybe two other photographers who had who who um shot this? This is a beautiful shot, beautiful. And um, now I do see like yeah, you know, I'm gonna run to your color shots. What's going on here? And I see a couple of these shots here. Is this an event? Yeah, this is an event for Netflix. Um, they had a show Bridgerton, and they just did this sort of uh, fantasy, you know. Thing where you know people could come dressed like the characters from the show, dance, and and you know it was a bit of a you know a performance um, that was in the theme of the Bridges and Chill. And um, was this the same event or is this yeah, another same? That's part of the event. That. I love uh, you know we event for you know we who like to take photos of events, uh, catching these emotions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really it, cool. yeah. Even even when the lighting's not great, or you know, whatever else is not working to your favor, if you can yeah. capture emotions, you 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 have a shot. And still, you're using a film photography. For this, for this, no, not this. Okay, digital. This okay. is yeah, this is digital. Okay. I was like, ooh. And also moments like this. What's going on here? What? Yeah. What, what um, it's a couple from I. Think, I think they were from Norway, if I mm -hmm. remember correctly. And, um, you know, they came on vacation. Um, the guy reached out to me, you know, said he wanted to propose on the bridge. And, you know, we got lucky. I told him, but it, the Brooklyn Bridge is, is going to be crazy. There are going to be people in your <laughs> shot, you know, whatever. And yeah. he was like, yeah, okay. He was cool with it. 
but we got lucky and you know really got what shocked me was you know a relatively clear shot you know like this and um you know he was very happy with it love it this is like a summer a summer day in in new york yeah and um what's it here's a sports oh yeah just you know i shoot um a few times a year i'll shoot the the marathon so we have the half marathon and then the full new york city marathon and mm -hmm. um you know so this guy I, I, he's a friend of a friend and mm -hmm. he's running it and um so i just took a moment to you know shoot him with his finishing medal wow let's see here and I love this shot. It's so beautiful. Thank you. What's going on here? So this is um, sort of a, a pre pre wedding shots for this couple. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to do something in Central Park, and um, they told me how they'd be dressed. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, "Okay, this is a medium format film." And um, the day, it, it was a little brighter than I wanted to be, but, you know, the day overall worked out beautifully. You know, their, their, their dress, you know, their outfits were amazing and the colors were amazing and they were amazing. So it was... Um, I, I love was Indian set. culture. I yeah. love Indian because their culture is such... Everything about Indian culture is so full of color. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, the colors are so brilliant. Um, like we, they just um, celebrated this week, Holly on yes. Sunday and Monday, yeah. and um, it's 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 just a colorful culture where I, I not to say other cultures aren't, but they really have these amazing outfits. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, that's just full of so much so much what what called dynamics yes. to it, yeah. flowing colors, layers um the the gentlemen wear such layered clothes as well so yeah one of my favorite things um do you do wedding photos um <laughs> not <laughs> no the wedding that's not my thing this was something i again i did with a friend and it was something you know we said okay let's we, we're gonna do it we're gonna do it on film and you know, it was, it was just sort of a challenge we undertook. Um, I love generally it. Generally happy with the results, but yeah, you know, we got some good stuff out of it. But no, this is not my normal, <laughs> my, my normal thing. And this is, is this one is shot on film. Yes. Yeah. And um, and we're just gonna go through some of these. If you tell me to stop on any one you want to share. I mean. Your photos are just so cool. I mean, look at this one. I think you may have to. You might have to step into the we the wedding arena. <laughs> See, th this one was different because so this couple they came from England and they just sort of eloped. This was this um was after I their, eloped. their 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 uh, city hall wedding, right? Uh, so it wasn't a traditional thing. Now I do city hall weddings pretty frequently. Like I'm okay, okay with that because it's just me and the couple. Sometimes you know they have a couple family members there, mm -hmm. but it's easy because we just shoot and then we go out on the street and shoot some more. And everybody's in a good mood, having fun, and there's not all the stress of 200 people and the meals and right, you know. And so oh yeah, I this know. sort of thing I do all the time. Now that's now that's an interesting genre. I, I'm. I, I don't think there's a, you know, you don't see too many advertisements of city mm -hmm. hall wedding photographer. Right. That would be a good genre to, to create probably. Yeah. Yeah. I do it. I do it pretty often. Wow. I would, I've never done a city hall wedding. No, no, no. I've never done a city hall wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another one. I love these. Again, another protest. Hmm. What's going on here, sir? This was during the um, Mas Amini. Uh, it says, help um, um, Iranian. Yes. Um, and so this was, I think, this one took place in front of the uh, New York Times building. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, a lot of heightened emotions as usual. Um, it was it was different because it was compact. You know, mm -hmm. it was this one. This sort of took place all on one sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, which is you know that presents a certain challenge because you're not moving around and you know, but you still have to find um, you still have to find a certain energy. You have to look wow. you know, a bit harder and it's a bit more contained, but. What is it that you look when you when you are looking for the shot? What are you looking for to make? I mean, this is it again. These shots, you are obviously emotions, but is there anything that like cues you, gives you a cue to like, um, you know what? I need to linger here. I need to photograph this. Something's going to come out of this moment. What 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 are some cues that you look at? Um, there's no one specific thing. I, for me, it's just, I guess because I've done it so much, I've gotten to the point where I can see somebody and feel like, oh, okay, this is, this person is very vocal. This is sort of a leader or this is, um, you know, somebody who has something to say and you just have to wait for that moment to come. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think you'll sort of feel it coming. And, you know, during that time, before you get to that point, I'm just um, filming, you know, photographing the surroundings, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, you always stumble upon something unexpected in the process. You yeah. know, this is, this is, you know, one of the things, you know, about situations like that is that they can be unpredictable, you know, so you have to always be ready, you know. Um, so the person that you may be waiting for, yeah, that's going to happen, but there's something good going on around them too. Wow. I mean, like I said, I, you, when you, anytime you post, I, I just, I mean, you post a lot of different, you know, you post about uh, political um, situations that are going on in the world. You also photograph all these different events, different people, different cultures, um, if you were to go back to your 15 year old self, what would you tell yourself about your career as a photographer? Um, I would say to myself, be patient. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, because, you know, I think that people, this is probably the result of you know, internet culture, Instagram culture, whatever. But people have this sense that you'll take one good photo and all of a sudden you'll be, you know, you'll be on magazine covers. Everybody, the whole world will be talking about you and, you know, this and that, you know. Um, but you have to develop what you're doing. You have to develop your vision. You have to develop how you want to tell your story, how you want to present your work and these things like that. You know, you don't just take one good shot and end up on Ron Foster's show, you know, <laughs> this is, this is, this is, um, this is a process, you know, so stick with it and, and, you know, don't let anybody talk you out of it. If that's what really matters to you, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, just, just, just have the, um, the courage to be patient with that whole process because it can be long. Yeah, this is very true. Um, also, who are some of your, um, who are the photographers that inspire you? Oh, I, I've, I'm going to, the same two I always throw out, Gordon Parks, Elliot Erwitt, two of my mm -hmm. favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have, have you have you been to the um, Gordon Parks uh, uh, exhibition on the West Side yet? Um, no, I Born, haven't. Born Black? I've, I've heard about it, but I haven't, yeah. We'll be there on Saturday. So if you want to join us, we'll be there Saturday um, from two to four. So we'll be hanging out there. But um, also, here's another question: um, What is the what is in the future for you and your business? What do you plan to? What do you? What is your? You know, when you think about what you've accomplished in the past, the magazines, all the people that you know, your photos have been in, in lots of publications, and you've done lots of exhibitions. Um, where do you see yourself in the future? You know, when you look at your timeline five years from now, what would you want to have accomplished between now and five years? In the perfect um, world. 
in a perfect world, just more more visibility, not just for myself, but for um, things that I care about, you know, the things that I photograph, you know, in, ser in terms of causes, movements, you know, whether it's for climate or immigration or whatever the case may be. Um, because it's never enough as far as I'm concerned, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I do enjoy the city hall weddings because they're easy, not, not easy, they're, e they're easier than a traditional wedding, but easy in the sense that they're laid back, you know, and, and I interact with people, you mm -hmm. know, in a way that I wouldn't be able to in, in a, in a bigger situation, yes. you know, and like, I really love that, you know, because I meet people from everywhere in the world, you know. They all come to New York, you know, and they want to get married here or whatever. And, you know, for a day or whatever the case may be, you know, you, you've, you they tell me this, you know, they, I'm, I'm part of their family now, you know, sometimes I'm their witness. And, yeah. and so, you know, I love that. And um, so, you know, more of that. Wow. Well, man, this is, this was great. I'm so glad you joined. I'm so glad you accepted the invitation to come oh, on of course i you, whatever 10 months from now whatever the next one is i'll, I'll accept it every time. <laughs> it is always good to have you and just again your work is just so beautiful and i i would just encourage you to continue doing what you do and um it's just exciting to watch what you come up with and like I said, I'm one. Of the, I'm one of your biggest fans on uh, watching you. your stories and listen to <laughs> some of the politicals. Uh, we're gonna have to have you on for a political day with them. Um, yeah, Christian. yeah, that'd be a <laughs> very, very different conversation. That's a different conversation, but you have some really good views, and you really are not afraid to express what you're passionate for. And I think yeah. that is another plus, and I think it also plays into your photography because you're not afraid to tackle some of the subjects that are, you know, that can alienate you in, as a photographer, yeah. but you still tackle it anyway. Mm -hmm. And you still make your, um, your ideas or your feelings of felt, how you feel about them public and you mm -hmm. share it. So mm -hmm. thank you for being who you are, Jason. You are the man, Mr. Jason D little guys. Uh, if you guys, if you have any uh, questions, you got five minutes to give this gentleman some questions. If you have them, um, just put a Q before your um, question. So that way we know it's a question. So um, so put a Q before your question. And then, and then we're going to sum it up because, oh, and just so people don't know, uh, people know that this is also going to be replayed on the Indie Soup Network. So um, usually at four o'clock, you'll see that. So we're live right now, but you'll see the recording of this uh, on Indie Soup. Uh, that would be on Indie Soup Network at four o'clock um, at the um, later on. So check that out uh, and also check out all of the amazing Indie Soup uh, folks. I see a question. Here's a cat. I love, I love this way. Yeah, there we go. We found the way. Q. Uh, here's a question. Gordon Parks and who was the other person you who inspired you? Oh, Elliot Erwitt. Elliot? Erwitt. Erwitt. Yeah, uh, another New, New York City photographer who, who shot the city. He had a sense of humor in his photos. It was very sometimes lighthearted um, work. Um, just so good. Nice. Any other questions out there? I see some hands. I see some some applauds, I see some hearts. Yeah, if you if you enjoyed this conversation, please hit the like. And also if you're here for the first time, you can also um, subscribe if you have not subscribed to this channel yet. And uh, also um, stay tuned for all that we do online here. Uh, okay. Um, oh, she's a uh, website. Yeah, let's give you this. He says, what's the, she said, Miss Kim Kimmy says, what's your website? Let's do that. Let me get that to the folks. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, let me see here. There we go. His website right there. So get that, take that down. So if you want to go to his page, he also sells calendars. Uh, he sells his prints. So if you go to his page, you will see his store. 
Um, so, but this is his web page right here, his website. So get that. Also, he is also on IG, Instagram. That's his handle. And uh, well, I wanted to go into this conversation. I forgot to talk about this handle. I wanted to know the history behind it, but we'll do that next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a moment. <laughs> How did you come up with this handle? Okay, so, um, you know, halides are part of the chemical makeup of, of a roll of film, right? Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, the crystal halides are on film, and then and it's, 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 it's nerdy. We, we always talk about being nerds, right? And so, for me, you know, as somebody who you see on the street all the time, sort of putting in the effort to use film, it takes a little extra effort, you know, you know that's, that's my hustle, so that's halide hustle. Gotcha. I was like, how did he come up with that name? <laughs> <laughs> and Paolo says, um, what made you start selling prints? Is it a is it a worthy stream of passive income? Um, yeah, I people people I had people asking for. Them. I it's not something, you know, it wasn't a vanity project or anything. It's just I have people saying, Oh, can I buy a print? You know, I was like, Oh. Yeah, sure. You know, and it was just kind of a thing, you know. Um, it's not a huge earner. I think people, I, you know, I don't know. It, it's a very specific and I think relatively small market, you know, in terms of prints. And I'm, I'm, of course, there are some people who do it, you know, on a, on a grand scale. But, um, yeah, you know, anything that I, you know, sell is is, is helpful. Nice. So again, I would say when when folks say, "How do we? How can we support this gentleman? How can we support this young lady?" Um, the best way you can support photographers and creatives is to purchase their stuff, purchase their work, encourage them, share, talk about them, share their work. That's the best way you can support. Okay. Um, I think we got all the questions. I think so. I think so. And uh, and Paula says, "Oh, brilliant name." <laughs> and she says nice and thank guys, you. again um jason thank you so much for joining us um, thank you Ron. thank you appreciate it man i appreciate you i appreciate what you do and um like i said keep doing what you do and encouraging us other us, we other we other photographers that you are you inspire us as well so thank you, um man. thank you for your inspiration and thank you for always being there and Again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me again. Cool. So, guys, uh, I'm gonna let Mister. I'm gonna let Jason go, and I'm gonna give you some announcements, and then we're out of here. Okay. So, Jason, thank you again. See you thank later. You. Um, so, again, this Saturday we have our meetup. Uh, if you have not gone to our meetup on um, the Meetup app, our Meetup apps is uh, la 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 la. Meetup, it'll be said Touch Base Daily. That's our um, page on the Meetup app. And you can sign up for this weekend. We will be at the um, um, Gordon Parks exhibition. So you can get all the details uh, from there. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun um, tomorrow, uh, sorry, on Saturday. And then uh, if you are in New York City, it is Easter Sunday. Um, we will be, I will be, obviously, every Easter Sunday, I photograph the um, Bonnet Parade on Fifth Avenue. And uh, if you uh, want to connect with me and uh, you want to join me on Fifth Avenue, um, some of the folks from the meetup, my meetup group will be going. I think um, Frank, uh, who is one of our um, members, he's going to be leading that effort. Um, but I will be there. I will be out there in the streets photographing every year. There's nothing more beautiful in New York City than the Easter Bonnet Parade and watching all the people that come out in New York City. So come on out on um, Sunday um, for the uh, Sunday the 31st. And then Saturday is our meetup and we'll be at the gallery on the west side for the Gordon Parks exhibition called um, Born Black. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I love Gordon Parks. He's such an inspiration to me, inspiration to what I do. Uh, I, I love his work and um, one of my inspirations. Okay, I think that's it. I think it's time to let you guys go. Guys, again, thank you for showing up. Uh, if you if this is your first time here, click on subscribe, like if you enjoyed this today. 
Uh, we had an amazing guest, our wonderful Jason D. Little. So, guys, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>